What am I supposed to say again? What kind of podcast is this? Oh, this is Bad Playstyle. We're a video game book club podcast, wherein we talk about the video game we played this week. NSFW? Uh, yeah, we, we swear a lot, and yeah. we're going to fucking spoil the shit out of this game. Yeah, I was going to say, what about secrets? Uh, yeah, we're going to ruin all the secrets. Such as? Such as, Bastel is really your mom. I said dad. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Campo Santos Firewatch. And, yeah. my, and my name's Matt. What, my my who, name who's is your name? SJW Snowflake Argumentative. Yeah, we're getting one or two more of those in. <laughs> Isn't this the last one? No, because the like 14th. The thir- yeah. If yeah. we if we oh, okay. really get it in on this next game, we can make him do that again. <laughs> nice. nice. That's good. Yep. All right. And I'm Owen. Okay. Owen doesn't have to say anything. That's great. Yeah. Neither do I. I go without saying. Um, I go without saying. As well. I like that. Yeah. Dude, but... I don't want to go without saying. Put that on my business cards. <laughs> Owen Harum. Manage, manage your time better and you will be like us in the hallowed halls of not having to say stupid shit instead of our real name, Keenan. Manage your time better. Story of my life. Yeah, that's, that's a good... Why, so... Just for the uninitiated. Why the fuck are we having this conversation? What's happening? Who is... Who are we? What is... Ha- what? We are Bad Playstyle. We are a video game book club podcast. Okay. Reddit. Talking to you. Okay. Yeah. We're a video game book club podcast. And if you don't finish your video game books on time, <laughs> we get to give you a silly name. Yeah. yeah that's that's how that works. Yep. Um uh, we we play we play Firewatch. We did. Um, but before we get to talk about Firewatch, we have to talk about some other there's things an first. Agenda, please. Uh, there's yeah. a there's an agenda. Yeah, we need to attend to the Doom agenda. Mm-hmm. An agenda. An agenda. <laughs> That's the one that wraps its tongue around its neck like a scarf. I think it's a, a a yakuza front for playing cards that refuses to have a good online service. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, we just got into like a couple of theories all at once. It's like I'm into it. Okay. Yeah, we're the we're the Alex Jones of video game mm, conspiracy yep. theories. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Can we be the Bill O'Reilly of video game book clubs? That's that's honestly worse. <laughs> um. We're, we're giving Owen a hard time. <laughs> we're giving him palpitations. Yeah. Right uh, I just wonder, like, I wonder what they think of each other. What, Alex Jones and Bill O'Reilly? Yeah. <laughs> you know, is, is Bill O'Reilly like, that guy's a maniac? Yeah. Or is he like, wow, that guy's got panache. You Finally, know, like, somebody gets it. And I, and I don't mean, like, in a public capacity, but, like, behind yeah, closed yeah, doors. Yeah, yeah. Like, what does Bill O'Reilly really think yeah. of, of uh, Alex Psychically, Jones? Psychically, what yeah. is what Is Bill Alex O'Reilly Jones? thinking, like, I did this first? Yeah, is, or... is he like, wow, look at that hustle. He, he definitely didn't, but, you know, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he would think that. <laughs> Owen. What's good? How's video games lately, bud? Oh, video games are good. Yeah. I, I got a new video game. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> tell oh, yeah. me about it. I, I mean, you guys have been playing it, too. Yep. <laughs> no, but tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, tell us about oh, yeah, it. Don't tell I, the viewer. <laughs> no, I refuse. Tell me about Never. it. Never. Okay. No, uh, I've been playing Deep Rock Galactic. Yeah. Deep, deep Cock Galactic, yep. <laughs> no, don't, <say> <laughs> don't do that to that game. Come on, dude. What? It's fucking great. Yeah. It's fucking it's great. It's pretty good. It's like, a, uh, it's like this um, four-player co-op like horde shooter. But it takes place in these enormous underground caverns that are entirely destructible. It's this huge geomod environment. Yeah. And so you you and your buddies get dropped from space in a giant space drill <laughs> and plunge deep into the crust a giant of this planet. rocket drill. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you, you are employees of some sort of enormous megacorp. Deep Rock uh, Galactic. Yeah, and you're dwarves. That's the yeah. important part. You're space dwarves. You're Tolkien face, space dwarves. And you go around mining out valuable minerals from the walls, and you're overrun with tyranids. Um, and yeah, they, they yeah. try and bite you, and you shoot them with guns. <laughs> and when you have enough of the correct rocks, you get back into your space drill and leave. Yep. And it is phenomenal. Rock and stone. Rock and stone! 
You're, you're, you guys got these great emotes you can shout at each other. Mm. You can drink beers with your buddies. Um, it's fantastic. I have that really rad Oktoberfest hat. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about I, that. I, I bought that hat because it was a limited yeah, time Yeah, I thing. was like, no, I'm buying that. I got that in the pumpkin. They're both really cheap. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't worn them because I don't think I'm, they... I'm going to wear them in like January when people can't get them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have had Christmas decorations on my Warframe ship. For Forever. three years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Since they came out. <laughs> no, actually, uh, the first year the Christmas decorations came out, because they came out during beta. Because oh. remember they had the Grenier deer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the Grenier all had big um, antlers. antlers. That's like one of the only things I remember about playing that game. Because, oh, yeah, because like, you played around yeah, the yeah, I, I, I played like, in the beta, and it was just like, all these guys got antlers. This is yeah, fucking weird. It was weird. <laughs> it's super weird. Um, so yeah, they had the Grenier deer. And then that year, they sold you the Christmas decorations for one one credit. One credit. And I bought them, and then I uh, trashed them, like, a few months later. And then the Christmas decorations came out again, and I was like, no, this time I'm keeping them. I want my... Because it goes, ching, 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 mm-hmm. ching. Like, it does a little jingle bells well, in your, in your ship all the time. Like every time and there's you go a back. fat snowman in the corner. Yeah, it's and he's great. wearing he's wearing a big old scarf. Which, mm-hmm. Um <laughs> Warframe's stupid. Yeah, it's really, really dumb. <laughs> Warframe's fucking stupid, <laughs> but it's really fun. So, what else have you played, Owen? I don't know. That's about it. I I beat Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Oh, you did? Yeah. Um, and I don't know what there's to say about that game because it's fucking Pokemon Yellow. And yeah. That game came out 20 years ago. <laughs> no. Um, I like it. I farmed up some shinies. It's got a system for forcing shinies to spawn. Where if you catch Pokemon in a chain, like you go out and catch like. 30 machops in a row um the odds of a shiny machop showing just up, up just go up also like just random as good pokemon will start spawning right and when you have that chain going so i farmed up some shinies and the, the machop machoke machamp trio they turn like lime green when Sick. they're shiny yeah. yeah 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 and so uh with the help of my friend victor we traded back and forth to force our guys to evolve because some of them are trade evolves mm-hmm. so i got a big green machamp and i ride on his shoulders Sick. and his name is big boy um does the belt change color or is it still maybe probably i don't know that's not the mm-hmm. most more green noticeable machamp part with a nickel belt that's yeah what I yeah you're the only person in this room that cares about wrestling belts yeah Sorry, buddy. no it's cool yeah his belt has a big p on it i'm not sure what it means i'm guessing power yeah. Um, like anytime I see just P abbreviated, especially in a Nintendo game, it's yeah, it's like, a pow, it's a power. Yeah. Um, I mean, me personally, I go with penis mm-hmm. um, almost immediately. But so I, I beat the the game though, and then I tried to play people online, and I think you get matched with people based on what badge you have. Oh. Um, I, I think that's a priority or maybe it's just that now the game's been out long enough that the people who I'm going up against are fucking savage yeah um, and like I've, it's like stepping into a fighting game online like yeah. you're just not prepared yeah and I, I've never really played Pokemon online in any competitive way so I, like I know how to play Pokemon but I don't really know what I'm doing in playing online yeah um, no it's like playing Starcraft campaign and playing Starcraft multiplayer yeah, it's a yeah. different thing yeah exactly it's a different thing so I, I, I the whole time I was playing through the single player I would occasionally go online and play a rando and I'd beat him like two thirds of the time and feel really good about yeah. myself and then after I beat the game I've gotten fucking trashed <laughs> every time and like I'll get into a match and like they have a shiny Mewtwo on turn one mm. and it's like you can only encounter Mewtwo once in the game <laughs> so you can't chain to force Mewtwo to be shiny um, it's just that you initiate your encounter with Mewtwo and Mewtwo will either be shiny or won't be. And it's like a thousand, one in a thousand chance. And you, you, you then, So um, this person like farmed this somehow. M- maybe, or they somehow edited the save file mm-hmm. on their switch. In, e- in either case though, like I'm way out of my depth. Because mm-hmm. they're either a very dedicated Pokemon player who probably knows the game They cared enough me. somehow. Yeah. Or they, they have the means to... Mm-hmm. Fuck my shit up. Like, that displays a degree of sweatiness that immediately puts me off and makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so I... There's a fucking sweaty trihodes over here on the TTS showing me what's up. Yeah, it's like it's like you step into a Street Fighter game and the dude just stands there and waits for you and you're like, mm, that's I don't not... like this. He's gonna flash yeah. kick my nose. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's ready for me and I'm not prepared for that. I'm playing Street Fighter. He's playing Tekken. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> So that's about the only other thing I've been playing, okay. um, other than my homework. That makes me uncomfortable. Is it me next? Sure, why not? Okay. It is now. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Twitch. 
which translates to me playing first person PUBG. Mm, gang violence. Gang okay. violence. Right. Um, when are you start playing Deep Rock on your Twitch channel? Deep. I probably will this. Some week. of your audience demands. Yeah, that I probably you do. will this. One week. of one of your subscribers yeah. demands that you're you not do. a subscriber. I am. <laughs> are, I fucking you're am. You're a follower. Those are different. No, I'm a fucking subscriber. Well, thank you. <laughs> I get a free subscribe from my Amazon Prime account, <laughs> and I cool. gave it to you this month. I apparently missed that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where's my fucking emotes? <laughs> yeah, we want emotes, dude. We were talking about to, this last time. I need to work on that. Yeah. Um, we need emotes. Yeah, so I was playing a game the other day, and one of my Twitch friends showed up and subscribed to me, and I was like, oh, thanks. But then you did too, so thank yeah. you. Um, you weren't online at the time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that. Uh, I ended up like playing with another streamer and like his friends, and that was cool. Yeah. Um, and then I've been playing Firewatch. And I've been playing a lot of Deep Rock Galactic. Yeah. And Stone. What else? I feel like there was one other thing I've been playing. Uh, I've been playing League a little bit, but really? Yep. Why? It does. I feel things, like we have this fucking conversation. It does things other games time. don't. It's not good. <laughs> it Nintendo's what Nintendo. Yeah. Blast processing. <laughs> it Nintendo's what Genesis. Is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's pretty much what I play. I really like the Scout class. In yeah, deep rock. It's my thing. Yeah, I. It's amazing how much like I was out of my element when we switched classes. Oh, I was yeah. like, I don't know what any of this stuff does, and I have no idea how to use it. Oh yeah, and I refused to look. Yeah, it up. no, like I was like, oh, I'm not gonna ask. There's no time. Like when I played not the driller, it was really <laughs> jarring to me how much aiming I had to yeah. do with my weapons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like this. Yeah, I, I and, yeah. And, and I think I was playing like the engineer, which like gets a shotgun. Yeah, he gets a like, shotgun and a revolver. And I was like, I'm not about this. This is way too. No, they demanding. get a shotgun and a assault rifle, or no, that's the scout. Scout has an assault rifle and a sawn-off shotgun for yeah. the secondary, which is fucking fun. <laughs> the game's got amazing music. Yep, yep. It's got this super sweet synthy like. It's like monsters underground music. There's, like, certain times where it's, like, carpenter synth, and then yeah. there's certain times where it's, like, totally not and still way acceptable. Yeah. Like, yeah. the other end of 80s synth <laughs> at times. Matt, what you been playing? Oh, I've been playing Warframe, too. That's the other thing I was playing. Oh, cool. Because they, they put out that new planet, and there's space skateboards. Yeah. What have you been playing, Matt? Warframe? Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, um, what was... What was I doing in Warframe recently? Oh, I, I've been doing the, um, um, uh, the, the, like, big kaiju hunts that they put you on. Okay. Those have been really fun. Um, been hunting down Eidolons in the, the plains of Eidolon. Who's right? your favorite kaiju outside of Warframe? My favorite kaiju outside of Warframe? Um... Probably King Ghidorah. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's a good solid choice. And then I've been playing Deep deep uh, Rock with you guys. It's really hard for me to not say Deep Cock. Um, <laughs> and, um, rock and Stone. Rock and Stone. <laughs> stone yeah. to the moon. <laughs> yeah. I love how the scout's voice is way higher. So he's yeah. in the corner. He's like, Rock and Stone, brother. <laughs> and he always, whenever you land, the scout's always like, I'm going to die. <laughs> And the gutter's like, shut up! It's stupid, too, because the scout is literally, in my mind, like, the most survivable class, because anytime I'm in trouble, I'm like, grappling hook! Huzzah! And I'm just gone. Well, as much as the grappling hook seems to be able to, um, sometimes be able to go through enemies. Yeah. So, like, I've seen scouts, like, get cornered by, like, a, a Praetorian or a Dreadnought, and then fly through <laughs> the Praetorian, like, into its mouth and out its ass. Oh, man, that, that time today where I got stuck in the drill yeah. and managed to save myself from a super fall that was, was rad. That was pretty wild. I'm gonna have to put a clip of that up yeah. on Twitch, because yeah. <laughs> that's a thing. Um, and then... Last night at a party at like two in the morning, I played a couple rounds of uh, Push Me Pull You. Oh, okay. Which is a wonderful indie game about uh, two human centipedes fighting over a ball. Um, <laughs> nice. Pretty great. That and, sounds enlightening. Um, and then at school, I've gotten a couple of the kids into Pyre. Okay. Um, nice. And like because they were starting at the same time, there wasn't that problem where one person just got roasted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but one kid was was like. 
I really like these worm guys. Yeah. And he did like a double worm guy team, and I was like, that's a terrible idea. And then he did fine, and I was yeah. like, what the fuck is happening? Like, what do I know, apparently? Yeah, yeah what do fuck I know? The meta. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what the meta is, but I was just like, the worm guys seem cool, but high skill. And then this kid was like rocking it, and I was like, all right. Um, and then in response to the next round, his opponent went uh, double demon and Tizo. And so his, his, <laughs> Fuck his fucking tire was just fucking yep. covered in aura. <laughs> yep. And then that was the round they both discovered they could shoot their auras. Uh, and so that yeah. that match lasted like 20 minutes. Yep. Like All the matches before that was like five minutes. And then that one was like, they're fucking jumping around, <laughs> shooting at each other. And I'm like, just get... Just, Get in there. Just go do the basketball. <laughs> go do it. <laughs> uh, go do the space basketball. Outer space magic basketball. Um, yeah. And I really, I really want to play Hitman too, but I have a lot of other games that I'm playing right now, so can't do that. I almost picked that, and then I didn't. Okay. It's a short story by Keenan. Yep. Nailed it. Nailed it. But, Entertaining. But I did pick uh, Firewatch because. Uh, I remember watching a post E3 video where somebody said to somebody from Complex Center, they're like, what is Firewatch? And I was like, what is Firewatch? I don't know. I don't know. Right? And now that I've played Firewatch, I understand that that was like a joke. Because, um, because leveled, you can't. You just can't. At, uh, I was talking with uh, Keenan yesterday about this, um, about how, you know, I was talking with our mutual friend Galen. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Galen, I have a book that you should read. And he was like, whoa, what's the book? And I was like, it's called Annihilation. And he was like, oh, cool, what's this book about? And I went, um, hiking. <laughs> and he was like, I don't I don't like hiking. And I was like, I know, but you'll like this book. And he was like, can you tell me anything about it? And I was like, I can't. If I do, I I'll ruin tell, it. <laughs> I can't tell you anything else because that would ruin the book. And I feel that way about Firewatch. Firewatch. Yeah. Like, so, you know. I have a Firewatch t-shirt. Um, and my uncle, who's a very outdoorsy guy, like he's literally hiked across like the width of the United States, kind of outdoorsy. Shout out to Uncle George. Yeah, yeah. My, my Uncle George, uh, <laughs> he asked me about my shirt. He's like, what is that? What is that shirt you're wearing? I'm like, oh, it's this cool video game about, uh, being a fire watch. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like, like anything you say simultaneously, like, sounds fucking stupid and doesn't do it any justice. Like, also, like, if I try and describe it, like, more specifically, I sound, like, crazy. It's, like, it's about loneliness and, like, staring, Yeah, you just sound like a douchebag. Staring like, running at, like, from your traumas and... <laughs> staring at beautiful, like, wilderness scenes <laughs> and... Talking to your best friend on the radio, <laughs> and like and like razzing lesbians occasionally. And if yeah. there's yeah. anyone who's going to understand this in a totally discombobulated way, it's Uncle George. But also, you yeah. still sound crazy. But he's also like the kind of guy where like he doesn't like using 21st century technology. <laughs> He's and in the woods for he a doesn't, reason. He, he doesn't vocalize it, but I sort of get the impression he does not approve of me playing video games <laughs> like, in a pretty broad way. I think he sees them as pretty frivolous. Um, so it's like, you would actually love this game, George! Like, like, like me, like, trying to, like... Hey. If there's any game that's for you, it's probably this one. Hey, dude, enjoy this art. It's in your bailiwick. It's like, I don't like that medium of art. Yeah. <laughs> It makes me feel deeply uncomfortable about the future of the human race. Yeah. Like, Alright. <laughs> what doesn't? It's cool, man. <laughs> so, what is Firewatch, yeah. man? Yeah, tell us what Firewatch is. <laughs> uh, Firewatch is a game where you are a um, old, beaten down... Henry. Henry. Um, uh, you're, you're sort of chubby, uh, and you take a job uh, at the Firewatch... Uh, because you need to not be around people. Um, because you kind of hate your whole life. Well, because y- you feel really guilty because your wife is dying of was it cancer? Oh no, she has uh, Alzheimer's. 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 She has early yeah. onset Alzheimer's. Yeah, so she's she's like in a bad way, and you're like, her family's just like, go, just get out of here, like leave her alone, and you're like, sure, right? Yeah, you well, and her so. family take her back to her home country. And, yeah, you know, so so she's not even near you. Right. She's not even here for you to be there for her right. while she totally forgets you. Like all yeah, yeah, and, and she's like, never gonna recover. Right, right. Like, like she, like she has Alzheimer's. Like she's not. Yeah. So the game starts with this like. It's like a. It's a twine game. Yeah, yeah, but it, it starts in like the same way Up starts. Mm-hmm. Right in like here's this great story. Ha- enjoy this narrative. Like make a couple of choices. 
and then like the actual game starts <laughs> right like like you live past all of this in in a few paragraphs of text and a couple of responses. What kind of dog you get, Keenan? Uh, the beagle. Beagle. Uh, I forget. I named it Bucket though. I got the big one, and I also named it Bucket. Bucket. Bucket's a good name <laughs> yeah. for a dog. I liked Bucket. That of the is three the correct name. Was Listeners, that is the correct name. Uh, yeah, fuck Charizard. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I picked the beagle because even though we'd just gotten mugged, I wasn't about to be a scaredy pants to take the big dog just because I was scared. That was sort of my reasoning there. Okay. That seems like overkill to take the big dog just because you got mugged recently. Why? Well, big dogs need love too, man. I'm not. I'm not saying the big dog doesn't deserve it. I go beagle. That's a little on the but, nose. But the game was like, she really loves this dog. Or you could be a dick and make your own decision about safety with this dog. And I was like, no, she likes this dog. We're picking this dog. I like beagles. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like. <laughs> like. I also choose beagle. <laughs> I didn't like the framing of the other choice. Is my <laughs> point. It wasn't for me. So yeah, you, you get through all the stuff, and then you find out that she has Alzheimer's, and you guys try and ignore it for a while. Yeah. And that doesn't work, like at all. Mm. It <laughs> works exactly as good as any other treatment of Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, and then she has an episode at work, and they send her home. Yeah. So forever. She, so she can't work anymore, and like you have to take care of her. And, and then that gets worse. Yeah. And then like... Your dude starts drinking and yeah. shit and getting dewy. You get the and... option of like put her in a home or take care of her yourself. That was tough. It, this was difficult for me because this exact thing happened to my dad. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, like it's a very like, my grandma has MS. Like I'm right there with you and they're like, holy shit, this is too real right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, anyway. Henry's wife, Julia, is that right? Uh, yeah, I think it's Julia. Yeah. yeah. She gets taken back to Australia. She's Australian. Yeah. I didn't know that until they took her to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I think they, like, side-mentioned it once, okay. but, it, but it was like, it was, I had the same reaction anyways. Yeah. I was like, they said that, but oh, okay. Yeah. And so your dude goes off to be alone in the woods to be a firewatch. He signs up with the in park Wyoming. service in yeah. Wyoming. Um, and spends the entire game on the radio with, uh... This lady who's also having problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what? Um, so, the, traditionally on the Doom agenda, we start with what was wrong with this game. I don't honestly have anything to say about this. Like, the only things I... The only real beefs I have with this game are, like, really small nitpicky things where... Um, it like like there's a, there's a lot of uh, ways they lead the player around that I think are a little too cute and on the nose. There's a couple of points too where I was like I don't fucking know what's next and had no way to like ask the game. I had to leave the game and go Google it. Oh really? There were only two, but okay. but it was the kind of thing where like I didn't mouse over the thing right and ran around the environment a couple of times and was like I don't I don't know because I missed like a crack in a rock or something mm -hmm. right. And so, like, things that I had run into before that I just considered part of the environment were now things I needed to interact with, and I didn't know that, and it hadn't really said enough for me to get that. Are you talking about the pythons? Like, putting in the That pythons? was one, and there was one other that okay. I don't remember. Because he, does, he does say, like, as soon as you go into that cave, he's like, I need to find a crack to put Yeah. Something. He does say that. Yeah. So. Um, but I didn't... Yeah. I didn't I, know what I was looking I for. I always thought the bear tracking collar was too convenient. Yeah. And, like, it kind of makes sense why it gets used, but it's definitely, like, a, like, okay, so what if this other character in the story had radio beacons he could place for you, and you specifically yeah. have a uh, plot device uh, detector yeah. that you can point and find. And, like, and like, like I said, this is, like, a little nitpicky thing. Like, mm. it's a little too cute for its own good, I think. Yeah. Um, but it's not a huge deal. Um, that uh, uh, Ned seems to be, like even before he decides to give up and move away, seems to somehow be interested in, like, making sure you learn his story in little piecemeal-y bits. Yeah. Uh, with, which, when, like, I found, like, when examined, like, the internal fiction didn't quite hold up to scrutiny. Why is this dude leading you around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so for me, I felt like that whole aspect of it was that, that, that Ned wants, because everybody thinks, like, you both kind of assume when you get, like, half the story, you're like, oh, Ned, like, killed his son. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I sort of get the impression that Ned really, really wants to tell everybody, no, I didn't. 
but at the same time, like, overwhelmed with guilt, doesn't really know how to do that. So, like, that one didn't really rub me the wrong way. Just yeah. Just that, like, that would strike me as Ned's goal at this point. There's a person out there that I can convince my side of the story is true. Right? I guess so. Yeah. I, I don't know. It... It, it broke me out of it a little bit. Like, also that, like, Ned never buried his son. Like, Ned left his son exactly where right, he Right, he's been it. there the whole time and yeah. didn't do anything about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, that part was also, like... So this is... This makes for a very good moment for the player to find uh, the boy, you know, uh, uh, desiccated at the bottom of this cave. Mm -hmm. But, like, why would Ned leave his son? Why wouldn't he go take him off into the woods and bury him? Why well, wouldn't he well, do... Well, like, Ned is a reflection of, of what both of the other main characters are doing to the extreme of, like, holy shit, what the hell sure. levels, right? Because he's not even dealing with it when it's in front of him. He's just running off into the woods, but also not but, leaving but, like, to do anything but else. But he goes to sleep every night about 40 feet from where his right. son's remains are <laughs> right, rotting. Like... <laughs> so we're jumping ahead a lot in the story. Yeah. Because we're trying to talk about things that so... don't work. But, but yeah, that's about it. Like, the game is, like, incredibly well polished and executed, I think. Um, yeah, and it never... It never feels like it's reaching beyond its scope mm -hmm. in a way that other games can. Like, I pick things up, I look at them, I put them down, I throw them. I don't really need more than that the way this game is framed. And and I never felt like I needed more than what they gave me as far as traversal. And Well, the, something that occurred to me on this playthrough is that, like... Um, the oh, yeah, because you'd already played it, right? Yes, yes. I, I played it when it came out two years ago, and then I replayed it um, last night. Was that last night? Yeah, whatever. Any, anyway, yeah, last night. Um, and like the amount of actual like area you can occupy is like very small. Yeah, like, like if you look at the map, you basically can go only on the trails, and then there's like a few like open mm -hmm. areas. And the game does a really good job of making it not feel like you're just walking in corridors, which is like basically what you're doing. Yeah, like from a game design standpoint, it is a dungeon. Yeah, but it's so open in design mm -hmm. visually well and the space all feels very real yeah like it like it you know like a lot of times in like a first person game like when you're bumping up against invisible walls or arbitrary walls it can feel very like irritating or or, or um not claustrophobic but like like you you feel like you're trapped or yeah. blocked off and it never really feels that a lot way. of the time it's either a solid rock yeah or a bushy enough area that you don't have the means to to mm. get through so it makes the barriers make sense yeah, they are natural in that way. It gives a it gives a good space of openness. I liked that a lot about it. So at the beginning of the game, you're sent down to the lake nearby to to shoo away some oh, yeah, some so rascal teenagers. There, there's, there's some youths shooting fireworks. Yeah, which is illegal because fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're the fire police. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and you're there to tell them to stop. I cleaned up all their trash. I cleaned up all their How trash. How can you be sure? I cleaned up all their trash. <laughs> so I ran into a situation where I found uh, a rock and there were two beer cans with only their corners sticking out <laughs> and I couldn't interact with them. <laughs> um, and it, it annoyed me that I couldn't pick up the two cans, but it also made me wonder like, how many of these have I missed? <laughs> you know, because it was just like a little tiny right, sliver. Right, right. It's not this bright red thing in the road. It's, yeah. 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 The, the, the game's a big fan of putting a big red thing in front of you. Yep. Um, I really like the banter. About their shitty beer. Like, yeah. like the game does such a good job of of humanizing these two characters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, you're talking about Delilah. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about Delilah. There's, there's, another, there's another person. Delilah's your boss. Yeah, she works at the fi next Firewatch Tower over and talks to you all the time because you're both bored. Yeah. Um, and... And hits on you once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, twice, depending on how you count it. Yep. Yeah, she, she's lonely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a point in that game where, where they're like, oh, are they studying us? I'm like, they don't need to study you. They know what happens. <laughs> like, they know how this works. Oh, yeah. How'd you guys like the, the spooky plot twist? With the, the guy? Like Ned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not convinced it's all Ned. Yeah? Yeah. What's not Ned? How'd that dude put up a fence? Nah, no, it's um, they're they're researching the animals. So he he. Both, oh, he's just like stealing there, shit from there, them. There was a research site that was abandoned during the fire season, or not abandoned. I but must just have like, missed this teacher. Just like left. Yeah, yeah. And there's even notes to say like we'll be back in three weeks or something yeah. like that. Oh, really? It's like yeah, literally okay. when you go through the gate, it's literally the first thing in front of you. 
I apparently missed that because like I was a, listening like to the dialogue. A, there's like a birdhouse right there. Yeah, no, I, I opened and that you, and I read that note, but I must have been listening to the dialogue the instead then. of reading the yeah. note. Well, and it's also, that's why there's like animal tracking, like wildlife tracking collars. Right, 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 right. Uh, what's really funny is there's a clipboard in there, and the first time you play through, you can read it and assume it's about your character. Mm-hmm. and it because But it's um, them cataloging bear behavior. <laughs> and it's like... I forget what it oh, says. Oh, so those, those, those sheets are about bears, not about yeah, you? Yeah, so it's, it's like... Uh, they just uh, happen to match the names? Disinterest in copulating and this <laughs> and that. Well, no, the names... The, the pages with the names that match are made by Ned. Okay. Because you can find the... Um, Versions of those where he screwed up right, 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 in his cave. So, so he planted those there to fuck with you to scare you off. But like, there's definitely a clipboard that is about a bear that you could very easily read yeah. and assume it's about your right character. with everything else that's been yeah. planted there. Um, yeah, that, that I thought like on this playthrough I found it to be very funny to read. I was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> I see. I see what you've done. Yeah, I. Okay, that makes more sense. And um, like, oh, like also playing that through the second time, it's like. You on the second playthrough, you have this outside perspective of like the type of paranoia that Delilah and Hank are yeah. trading in yeah, 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 is yeah. the type of paranoia that you can only uh, uh, cultivate when you have no outside voices to no talk outside to and, voices. No... And, and both of you believe it. Yeah, and right? like, like, like I have no perspective on it. Yeah, and they're like, "What's all this equipment? What's <laughs> what's all? The... I don't even know what this machine is. How did it get here, Delilah?" And she's like, "I don't know. Maybe they got helicopters." And he's like, "Oh, I don't know about helicopters." And it's just like it's just a fucking antenna and it's blinking. Right. Like... <laughs> Yep. It's just a radio beacon or something like fucking yep. ding dongs. Yep. Yeah. But but it also does a really good job of dragging you into that. Oh like, yeah. Like like in a, in a way where like you're forced to trust these characters, mm-hmm. right? You're you're forced to trust these characters because they're all you have in this environment that that definitely like builds that for you. I, I read a a uh, uh, a fan theory in the worst form of fan theory, the kind I hate the most, where it's like. Y'all are stupid. There is no Ned. Delilah's been fucking with the whole time. She says she never leaves the tower, but clearly she likes hiking around. And she's and she's displayed that she knows how to throw her voice. When you woke up in the middle of the night and you thought you were talking to your wife in a dream, that was actually Delilah on the radio doing her fake Australian accent. And she did Ned's voice and she killed that boy. And it's just like, whoa. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Oh. Fuck. That doesn't explain any of her reactions to any of it. And, like, the only explanation is that she's just evil. <laughs> Video games gotta have a villain, right? Yeah. yeah, that she's just a psychopath in the woods. Some some grognard mad at women blaming the only female character in the game. Yeah, this is like... Mig- the, MGTOW. This, this is like the same personality who's, like, trying to figure out the cheat code to get the shotgun in Firewatch. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Like, he, he needs his games to be a, a way. <laughs> video game. I got a gun in a video game. And there's a bad guy. Work. So did you, like, fuck up their stereo or anything at the lake? Uh, on my first playthrough, I threw it in the lake. I did. Yeah. Um, the second playthrough, I, because I'd heard of what other people do with it, I was like, oh, I'll take it with me. But then I took the wrong path back to my tower, and I was like, oh, I got to rappel down this cliff. Uh, I'll throw the radio down first, and then I'll rappel down, but that's like the point in the game where your rope is broken. Yeah. So I couldn't go down there, so the radio was just, I can't get to yeah. it. <laughs> and then like later, when I found myself down there, the radio was gone. Um, As we know where that ends up. <laughs> I took it back to my tower, um, and this was after Ned had been there, mm-hmm. you know, because there's like a typewriter outside. Mm-hmm. Right, so, yeah, but apparently, typewriter apparently he that. came back and stole my fucking radio. Yeah. Asshole. I mean, it's in his cave later. Yeah. yeah. I know, that's what I'm saying. Apparently he came back specifically to steal my radio. I mean, he knows where you live. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he used to live there himself. Um. Yeah. Uh, the... The middle of this game is weird. Yeah. In like a, it's just about the characters. Oh yeah, yeah. Like the tasks in the middle of the game, like super don't matter. It's just like yeah, excuses like, to start conversations. Like you putting planks up over the window. Yeah. Or, or whatever. I mean, like that's like the most logical one mm-hmm. outside of like, hey, go around that way, go around that way, go yeah. around that way. But it's also cool because it like pushes you through the environment. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. a way that that is satisfactory. Yeah, like when the phone line gets cut or whatever, yeah. and so it's just like, okay, go on a hike while you talk to Delilah, and then the game will very explicitly tell you when the hike is over because that's where the cut phone line is. Yeah, yeah. I I felt like everything flowed really well. 
Yeah. Like, a lot of it was timed out in a way where I couldn't interrupt it. Well, and the, the game does a thing where it's like, so when you have a game like this that's, like, in a small contained environment, um, to keep the player from, like, walking into a late part of the game early or whatever like that, you have to gate these things off with different mechanisms. Mm -hmm. um, like, in Gone Home, you can't go into the attic until you have, find, like, I think it's a key for it. You know, and because that's same where with the cave. That, that's where the story resolution is. Right. It's the same thing with the cave. But the, the, this game has like a series of these, but they all feel they're very, really natural. They feel very organic and natural in a way that they don't in other games. Like I was just playing Let's Go Eevee. Like that game's full of little gates like that, mm -hmm. like all the HMs and things yeah, like that. You can't get through here until they burn it. You can't get through yeah. here until they you have and, max. And they're and they're super arbitrary in Pokemon and feel very forced. And in this, it's just like. Well, and, and I didn't I, have a crowbar yet. I, yeah. I never felt like I didn't want to do that either, right? Like, the mm -hmm. fence shows up, and you're like, what the fuck's going on? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to fucking break in there and find out what's going on. Like, yeah. I, as the player, am motivated to follow that breadcrumb in a way that that yeah. is hard to execute. Yeah, and then the, the axe is a few of them. It's like chopping down trees yeah. to walk over them and, like, chopping down brambles in a way that feels natural, but also you wouldn't have seen those things as obstacles if you happened upon them before you got the axe. Right. Like the brambles, it's just like, oh, that's Im that's an impassable thing. Right. Or I went to the place that they burn through mm -hmm. beforehand, and it's just like, oh, it's overgrown. I can't go through here. Later. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You can't go through the controlled burn space. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's really interesting how well-wielded all the simple things in this game are from, mm -hmm. from design perspectives. In like a holy shit, like you did so little and made so much with it like yeah. kind of way that's really cool i'm very excited for that it's like a, a master class and not wasting your dev time mm -hmm. yeah yeah I and mean, well and not wasting like fucking anything wasting your player's time wasting no. anything like it's there there were a few times where i'm like okay finish up this dialogue i need to like move forward with what i'm doing mm -hmm. right because it like while you're in a dialogue if you initiate a new one the old it one just, just like it. ends mm -hmm. um Oh, most of the time mine got queued. No, mine did not get queued. Mine oh. just ended. Okay. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. I must have waited like long enough for the cutoff point to be gone or something. Um. Yeah, like it's. It's this really like interesting minimalism, to a to a game mm -hmm. as far as like function. Is concerned, and then like you get to the credits and it's like six people. Sure. And you're like, yeah, okay, well, yeah, cool. Campo Santo, it's like. Uh trying to remember i don't remember all their names I, I used to be able to think of them Just say trent reznor say sure trent. yeah trent reznor trent reznor, trent reznor. Be careful you'll summon him uh. um. easter bunny easter bunny easter bunny <laughs> um so we've talked about what we liked about this game for a while um was there anything else anyone wanted to add on that note any things that really stuck out to you like as it's a really sad game. Really, reasons to like, love like, the game. Like yeah. I'd played it before, and even like the like the little just dialogue tree at the beginning of the game is like, oh yeah, that's right. This game's like, not like a bummer, but it's but it's like it's really. Um, it's got this like emotional realism. Yeah, going on in it that's like, huh. and, and and not just like in the setup, but like throughout the the whole game where it's like like at the end like. In this game, it's not that I need this game to have a happy ending. Right. But I do want... I want that. I want Delilah to wait for Henry because I want, like... Like, it's this, per this you person... You have this entire setup to this want This person that. that he has this connection with. That, that he, and he's never met her. Yeah, and he's never met her. And I, apparently now he's never... Probably not going to. Right. You know, she says, like, maybe someday we'll... You know, it's like, no, that's not fucking no, happening. You're a pathological liar, so that's yeah. not happening. Well, honestly, though, they'll probably meet at the debrief for the park service. Yeah, but that's not like... You can't have the conversation that they were going to have. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I hit that point, though. Like, I got there, and I'm like, yeah, of course. Right, like, at the same time, like... I was also like bummed, but I was also like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't get to meet her. Like mm -hmm. that's not what this game is about. Like, yeah. but it, it still bummed me out both times. Yeah, you know, no, I, like I still hurried both times to get to the extraction at the end. Um, it, it bummed me out, but at the same time, I think it was like, uh, it's like a, a good there's a truth to it. It's a, yeah, there's a good end. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I was trying to say. It's like yeah. natural in in yeah, the way like, the rest of the oh, game is. Oh, of fucking course you wouldn't wait for me, even though I begged you to. Right. Of course you wouldn't. Did you guys save your turtle? Yeah. Bucket Jr. No, but you bring him with you at the end, yep. I believe. Did you bring your wedding ring? 
Yep. Oh. No. I don't need that. I am not bringing my <laughs> wedding ring. I, I, that was one of the very few choices in the game where I stared at it. Yeah. Like, I'm talking to her with the one hand, and the ring is in my other, and it's like, take, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was one of those moments where I'm like, oh, this is a really heavy choice. Well, even, like, even just the first time that, like, it, you find it in the tower because like he's wearing it when you get there yeah, yeah, yeah. and then like one of the mornings you wake up in the tower and the he's taken off his wedding ring and it's just sitting on the table yeah it's like hmm yeah yeah like do i think hank needs to wear this wedding ring anymore like do, does hank think this yeah but, yeah like the fact that you can you have built a story in a situation where i pick up that ring and i fucking stare at it because yeah. i'm having an emotional reaction is like oh yeah and not even because I am having that reaction, but just like, what does this mean for my character? Like, well, and, they, and they, they do it in this way that like sneaks up on you. It's not mm-hmm. like you're playing dramatic music as like Hank holds it <laughs> off his hand right, right. and sets it on the table. It's something that happens off screen, mm-hmm. and so you're, you're left to to spin the, the gears in your head and, and well, interpret what it and means. And you've just spent like 80 days in the game with it on your hand, not even thinking about it. Sure. I was, I, one thing I will say at this point is. Um, the music never laugh track tells me how to feel. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I think, an accomplishment in and of itself. Especially in a game like this where... Yeah. Shout out to Chris Remo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you mean Trent Reznor. Yeah, Trent Reznor. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Also, the title screen had a completely different feel after I beat it. Yeah. Like... At the beginning of the game, like, you know, Howling Wind, Firewatch Hut. Like, okay, cool. And then at the end, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, like, I am lonely right now. Look at this title screen. <laughs> so, m- m- speaking of the title screen, <laughs> my computer does this really weird thing where when you start up a game and it goes through the splash screens, there's that moment where it's loading, like, between the sc- splash screens and the main menu. Mm-hmm. It plays... It just, instead of showing, like, a black screen or anything, it shows, like, a single frame from, I don't know how it chooses what game it is, but not the game I'm playing, (laughs) right? So, currently, every time I boot up Deep Rock Galactic, between the splash screen and the main menu, it shows me the main menu for Firewatch. Oh, wow. I don't know why it's doing that. It's not really a huge issue, but it is a thing. Yeah, that's that's a strange interaction. It is a strange thing, yeah, I don't know why it's doing it. I think I think this game wields the reveal in a way that's really interesting in a lot of contexts mm-hmm. because like the camera at the end like in the credits it goes through the the disposal of camera pictures oh sure and there's some that are already taken right? and it's yeah it's like reverse order of everything you took and then what's on the camera already and so there's these things where like oh you actually get to see these people mm-hmm. including your player character like cuz yeah, yeah, cuz yeah. when you pick it up you fucking hit yourself with it like it's this whole thing and so there's this like doofy picture of there's your a, guy I showed like, you my dick like, <laughs> like, <laughs> please respond yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like and so like even that after everything else I was like oh okay cool like there's all these things that like open up in the course of you playing the game. In I forgot way. about that because I, I didn't watch the credits this, on the okay. second playthrough. Yeah. Like, I watched the credits the first time. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was cool that you can get them developed. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. They have that, like, service where you can, like, pay ten bucks and they'll send you prints of yeah. your pictures. Which, like, the the art style in this game is, like, one that I think translates pretty well to that. There's a lot of games where it's like, oh, yeah, get my video game screenshot on photo paper, and it's like, mm, no, thank nope, you. Nope, nope, that's gonna look like mud. No, but, like, yeah. if I already had art in my house and I put up photo, uh, a piece yeah. of Firewatch, like, it wouldn't be weird. Yeah. Like, this is a cel-shaded technicolor dream world. Well, yeah, like, it's it's so vibrant, it's so ridiculously, like, yeah. colorful Some at all times. Boxes. Yeah. Um, I have a request. Yes. Listeners, send us your photos. Corey and Trevor. From Firewatch. Send yeah. us your photos. Send us your photos from Firewatch. Yeah. I want to see that. I'm down. See I what... scrolled through their PAX gallery for a while. Oh, cool. <laughs> I saw people I knew. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. Oh. So... <laughs> we'll talk about it later. All right, whatever. <laughs> it's from 2016. Sure. Like, oh, yeah, there they are cosplaying. Cool. <laughs> like, we don't want to blow people off on that. Po- I thought the whole function of this podcast <laughs> was to put our friends on blast. The secondary yeah. function. Yeah, I thought that was the. There was definitely a Hanzo Bobby. 
Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, did you guys see that Victor is the official picture on Spanish Wikipedia's page for Captain Falcon? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, friend, friend of the show, Victor. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> that that's, is a very good Yeah, costume. it's fucking amazing. It's very good. Um, I mean, I like his Phoenix Wright better than his Captain yeah. Falcon, but... When when he does it, he does it well. His, his Phoenix Wright costume is on the cover of a... You, so you remember Top Ten, the uh, Alan Moore comic? Yeah. The spinoff of that, that's oh. by Xander Cannon. Right. Um, the cover is done by Gene Haw, who's a friend of our friend Feather. <laughs> yeah. So Feather and Victor are in the front row in a oh, yeah, trial. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, and and Victor is uh, then dressed as Phoenix Wright, I think. What was Feather dressed as? I forget. Was she toy box? No, she did a toy it, box. it's not a toy box costume. It's something okay. else. Okay. Um, cool. Weird tangent. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. No, um, yeah. It's our podcast. We can cry if we want to. Yeah. Yeah. Firewatch art, man. It's um, fucking good. So we've talked a lot about Campo Santo. Um, do we want to say anything else about Campo Santo? Um, what other games have they made? They are. They've made no other game. games. Okay. They have another game coming out, Valley of the Gods. Uh, yes, yeah. and it's set in like Egypt in like the twenties or thirties. Cool. It looks like a very similar style game. Yeah, although there's actually like people in it that you can see. Yeah. Me, I was. It was annoying to me, the multiple times during the game. Not annoying. Annoying is not the right word, but it was. Um, it was grading against my immersion. When uh, Delilah just black or, or or Henry would be like, "Oh, well, th- there might be someone here," and I was like, "There's not gonna fucking be anybody here, <laughs> you fucking moron." <laughs> There's no character models in this game other than your dwarf ass body. <laughs> there, there's the silhouette of Ned, yeah, and the, the silhouette of the girls of the teens, and then the the firefighter at the very end in the helicopter, yeah. and like that's it. And the well, the firefighter at the end, a little rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I saw that. I'm like, I get it now. <laughs> like, <laughs> When you see Ned's fucking like a like andro androplastic yeah yeah uh, yeah proportions, like his like yeah. Team Fortress two arms yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah which like you know develop your style like yeah, yeah. there's plenty of style in this game yeah, they, that other game they're making looks really good though okay. yeah. and it'll probably be the last game they make under the name Campo Santo cause, yeah because Valve they're, bought them they're Valve absorbed yeah cool so that's yeah a bummer play Firewatch if you didn't already you should you should play it it's good yeah we... it's good in a weirdly satisfactory way considering all the d- dangling chads it's like an art hat movie yeah that's art, good art hat movie art hat fun? movie art hat movie it's been, I want an art hat uh, oh you have a chicken hat <laughs> yeah I want an art hat <laughs> okay. we've already given you several hats <laughs> you so many hats um, are we ready for the not real game awards or does yeah. anybody have um, no, I think more I'm good. things bubbling out of their body that need to be said on the podcast no I think I'm good no yeah. no bubbles okay well, so I'm just going to launch straight into... Oh, I should probably... Um, what the fuck are we, are we about to do? <laughs> yeah, Keenan, what are we going to do? The what Not is... Real Game Awards are a set of awards we have created over time. <laughs> the, the Not Real Jeff Keighley's Not Real Game <laughs> yeah. Awards? Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> The Game Awards, they're oh. run by Jeff Keighley. Oh, right, Keighley's. right, right, right. The not real Jeff Keighley's. Yeah, no, I remember, Keighley's. You remember, um, remember when, we, when like, uh, Max was like, hey, watch the Game Awards with us. Yeah. And I came in there, and I was like, who decided this guy was doing the Game Awards? And he was like, well, he just decided. It was him to, or Tommy Tallarico, <laughs> man. Like, he, he just decided to do it, and he had enough money to do it, yeah. so he gets to do it. And yeah. I'm like, really? That's how that works? You just... He used to be a G4 host and, like, produced shit. Yeah, All right, whatever, thing. man. Eat your own feces. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the Not Real Game Awards <laughs> are, uh, are named after after people. After. After. <laughs> um, sounds like heart medication. Um, well, yeah, it does. <laughs> so, so they're named after people or, or uh, things that evoke feelings or aesthetics in games we have played before. Yeah, I think that's a fair. And we rate them on a scale of one to five. They're always one to except five, except for Moira Brown, which is a simple pass fail. <laughs> yeah. All right, in we go. Todd Howard. <laughs> Z- Zero Todd. Z- Howard. Z- <laughs> Zero Todd Howard awards. Go away, Todd. You're a disgraced game designer now. <laughs> oh God. This game does not evoke Todd Howard. Uh, Brandon Chung. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Um, b- 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 who's, Brandon, who's Brandon Chung? Brandon Chung is the, the, fuck, what's the studio's name? Blendo Games. Blendo Games, guys. Square Heads, right. Environment. And you said three. three. I can feel three. Uh, I, I'd give it a two, but I'm okay with a three. Okay. Um, 
I want it, I want their world to be more weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, but it does have like a level of like product design in the uh, game minutia that I very much appreciate. I was upset I couldn't take the pork pawn sign home. Dude, I wanted to collect all the books I found. Like I found books all the time, and it's like I only have like five books in my tower, and I've been here for months. Yeah. Like I need books. Also, yeah. they're all a series. I know. Like they're all a fucking detective series that that kid's reading. <laughs> like... Okay, Nina Freeman. Nina Freeman. Oh, this is like four Nina Freeman. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready what, to go five. What, what stops it from being a five? I don't know. Okay. Right. I'm willing to go I'm just, five. I'm just willing to examine that. That's all I'm asking. Uh, so. I, I definitely felt a lot of things in this Because I'm feeling a four, but I'm just saying, like, uh, what, I, why, I, what, I, like what, what would it need to do to be... More Sailor Moon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, there's an aesthetic difference sure. visually that... No, I'm I'm on board with four. I'm on board with four. Um, so how about our boy Simon Vickland, who's honestly I think kind of the opposite as far as attitude yeah. goes to Nina the Freeman. Anti -Nina, Nina the anti-Nina Freeman. Freeman, not in a bad way. Yeah. Just in that there's an axis there. Yeah. Um, it's like action movies versus the, the Nina Oscar movies. The, the Nina Simon spectrum. I'm yeah. I'm gonna go with the zero here, and I want to talk about this a little bit. I remember you were playing the game yesterday, Keenan, and you were saying, "Oh man, I'm waiting for that moment where this dude following me around cuts so, the rope." So yeah, 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 yeah. The act. I was I was talking to Matt about this, and I failed to mention it when we were talking about the game. There's that point where the rope breaks on you when you fall, like yeah. really early. So I'm like, yo, that's the act one thing. This dude's going to chop a rope while I'm on a thing, and it's going to fuck me up. Like, that's yeah. a that's another ambush, right? Sure. And it never happened. Like, yeah. Matt was like, oh, yeah, that never happens. And he leaves, and I'm like, is Matt fucking with me? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, in my head, every time I'm going down a rope as I'm finishing the game up, I'm like, is he right? Is it going to happen? <laughs> like, like, I'm sitting there fucking slow walking my ass down the cliff, like, Motherfucker, come, come chop my rope. In, in, in the Simon Vickland version of this game, that would happen. That absolutely oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Like, like, yeah, in the Simon Vickland version, yeah. that kind of shit would be all over the place in this game. So zero. Zero Simon Vickland. Sorry, yeah. Simon. Your music slaps. Uh, oh. Also, Simon Vickland's done pretty well for himself recently in our awards, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. We've been playing some um, um, some raggedy-ass teenager <laughs> games, you yeah. know? Yeah. What, is, what is the, like, teenage white boy Jinko jeans version of the word ratchet? Like what? Uh, what do we say there? It's dope. I don't know. Is it dope? Radical. Radical. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, All right. Like... I'm done with that. Um, J E Soyer. Eh. Two or three. Really? I could go either way. I'm gonna go with a two then. I'll give it two. Yeah. But there's very like deliberate things. Well, it's, in the it's same the way. planning of the reveals and the and the, the way everything sort of meshes together to build to this crescendo that gives it any J okay. story at all. Sure. Well, that, that's that, the way that I we feel build about these it. characters without ever seeing them is impressive in a yeah. way that, that feels like this is the place we give that recognition. I don't know, I feel like in video games there's a ripe pasture of voices in your ear that are fully realized characters that you never see. Yeah, but but the the environments you run into that are these people's tell you more than that in a sure. way I found meaningful. Like, sure. I, I just think that, that by itself doesn't set it apart from... No, a, no, that's fair. A lot of games. But, like, when you Snake. run across the kid's hideout... Snake! Like, right. Snake! But when you run across the kid's hideout, like, you learn some shit about the kid. When you sure. run across, you know, like... Yeah. yeah, you get to walk into these people's bedrooms Tacoma style and right. sift through their shit, right. <laughs> yeah. which is definitely. I mean, I mean, it's definitely like a a, a gone home like. Yeah, it is. It, yeah. it is of that genre of walking simulator. Um, Jeff Bezos. This is your Jeff Bezos. None. Zero Jeff. Unless Bezos. he's the forest fire. But Tarn Adams. <laughs> Tarn Adams. I'm I'm zero on Tarn Adams. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the right the, kind the, of The Tarn Adams is a very reclusive award that is... Yeah, it's okay. Some of these awards are reclusive. That's only, right. only lands on certain types of games. Um, Jake Solomon. Uh, that's a zero. Like I want to give it a one, but I don't know why. I can't, like... There's attachment, but not in the same way. I feel, the same I, way. I, feel yeah. I feel like you come to this with Jake Solomon a lot, where, like, you have a you have a gut reaction that yeah. you can't justify. Yeah. I, think, I think the difference is it, it is intentional that I get attached to these people and the events in this game, and I don't think that's a thing in XCOM. Okay. Right, that's where that's where I draw the line is that is that that happens by way of your experiences with the game rather than the game's experiences it's serving you. Cardboard computers. Mm. I give this like two. It would have to be weirder to get more than a two. Yeah, two. 
There were points in the game where I would give it more, but now that like I have the information, yeah. let it let it be known that I cannot make you guys not give it a two, <laughs> but it makes me uncomfortable to give it a two and not a one. So yeah. just I'm okay. putting that out there. Um, that two with protests. <laughs> <laughs> Moira Brown Memorial it's a Award. Report. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's the the Moira Brown Memorial Award is for excellence in letting players miss content. Um, eh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Like like there's like little little tidbits here and there that can yeah. that can pass you by, but like but it's like really hard to miss the beats. Yeah. You're yeah. you're never gonna miss. You're not gonna miss anything that that you might feel sad about. So, wait, so we're not. Um, sorry, Campo. We're not giving you a Moira Brown Award. Which you know that's okay. We only give Moira Brown awards to people who deserve it because Moira Brown sacrificed her life for us to miss content yeah. in video games. Yeah. She did that when she always got blown gone, up. never forgotten. Always, always gone. Yep, never forgotten. Um, I'm still mad. <laughs> I'm still upset. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. You know, I, we made the award. It's been to, years, to, and I'm still to upset. try to try and like assuage your feelings. Every um, time we, we rip the scam open, we we know that 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 Fallout Three was just a uh, tremendous game that didn't steal 100 percent of its ideas from uh, other better oh games. <laughs> Fuck those vampires! I'm just astonished with this game that. Um, they had a lot of environmental storytelling, and there was not a single skull in a toilet. Right. <laughs> not a single one. Yeah. 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 How, how did we know I was how this person... Way to imagine... really blow open the box on <laughs> environmental storytelling. Uh, I, 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 like, Such deep emergent games. I, I have strong opinions. We all do. We have strong opinions about the 3D Fallout games, right? Yeah. But I was watching a YouTube video, and somebody was saying... What's, people were saying there's no storytelling in Fallout 76, and I just find that, frankly, not true. There's the best kind of storytelling that Bethesda's good at, environmental sco- storytelling. Then they hard cut to, like, a skeleton with some papers <laughs> near it, and I was like, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> That's not environmental storytelling. That's not, That's, no. Like, environmental storytelling is in Dark Souls when I find a sword in a specific place, and that means something, Right? And, and then, like, based on who owned that sword before, I can infer things if I'm paying attention. Not, there was a dead guy in there, and that's sad because right. the world There's was There's a difference over. between environmental storytelling and a snapshot of what happened here. Right. And those, those are different. Right. <laughs> They're importantly different. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Rant over. Okay. Yeah. Can we have a new award? <laughs> can, can we have the golden skull in a toilet? <laughs> Yes. Can we call it the golden toilet skull? I feel like that's better. Sure. All right. Golden toilet skull. What, what is the golden toilet skull for? For excellence in environmental storytelling. <laughs> it is excellence in like sneer quotes. <laughs> Maybe we'll we'll find out when we we'll give it out. Or out when we have it out again. Is this a zero to five or a one no, to five? No, 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 no. This no. is a on off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You get a do- golden toilet skull, or you don't. Does this game get a golden toilet skull? No. 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 Absolutely not? Absolutely not. not. Alright. I don't think I understand the golden toilet skull. I don't either, but well, I'm excited but... to right. learn more. We're going to figure it out together. <laughs> we're gonna... As we say in this friends group, we're going <laughs> to fuck our, our way, way through, through this. this. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you see that news and nuggets are fucking show's catchphrase? What the fuck's wrong with you two? <laughs> I have several as of yet unnamed learning disabilities. <laughs> um, um, all right. So that was that was Firewatch. Yeah. Um, Keenan. Yeah. How's um how's the uh, sweaty guys? So the sweaty you, guys in diphthong. You asked me in the pre-show meeting if we had. Oh, look at how legit we sound with that phrase. Yeah. Um, with our production don't call meeting. it that. <laughs> when our so, staff got together for their production meeting. Yeah, in the writers' room, we were talking about uh. That was like a half an hour ago <laughs> with my phone. <laughs> Shh. You're ruining Corey and Trevor's immersion. We um, do boys now. So. <laughs> So, you asked me if there was a dumb wrestling thing, or if we should cancel it, and I remembered that I found a really dumb wrestling, two really dumb wrestling things. Mm. Uh, They're both very short, though. Baron Corbin, who finally cut his hair, I mentioned that before. You did? (laughs) He is the most milquetoast, boring, six foot five, used to be a boxer motherfucker you've ever seen. And he's into ghost hunting. Yeah. <laughs> and the second episode of his dumbass Facebook video show on ghost hunting was at a bar in Seattle. What bar? Uh, it's in West Seattle. It's old as fuck. 
Well, yeah, ghosts. It survived the fire. Like its whole thing. I don't sure. know. I don't know about it. It's tourist bullshit. Um, so there's like a thing in Pokemon Go where if you trade a Pokemon with someone and that Pokemon was caught over a certain amount of time ago, they are guaranteed to have this bonus trait applied to them during the trade. <laughs> now, if a building is just over a certain age, they're just it like... Just it like, just has ghosts. It just has ghosts. There's, yeah. there's, yeah. there's, there's a, like a flag. Oh, you're over 60 years old? Ghosts. Unless yeah. the ghost hunters go in there and scrub it a ghost. Yeah. Right. But ghost hunters don't eliminate ghosts. They're like they're not the ghost busters. They're the they're, they're, they're the not? they're the ghost agitators. Okay. Yes. I'm they're... gonna be I'm gonna be real with you guys. I've never watched a ghost hunting <laughs> show, but I thought the whole point was to get rid of the ghosts. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. no. If, it, if it was real life Ghostbusters, this shit would rule. No, it's like ghost porn. It's not like. You don't what get do they rid do of to it. the ghosts? They, so, like, my favorite one, Ghost Adventures, is three bros who yell at ghosts. <laughs> they just yell at them? Yeah. They literally come at me, bro, with the ghosts. I feel like that's a really good way to get possessed. Uh-huh. There's a couple incidents where they claim things, and it's hilarious. Uh, it's not hilarious. So they push me, bro. <laughs> so they push me. Okay. <laughs> uh, so they so, just they just go down in the dark and so, like hallucinate so, because of sensory depth. Yeah. Cool. So the, the other the other dumb wrestling thing is I told you about how uh, the other you get one. Yo yo, but it's really <laughs> there's an est on the end of that word, dude. Kevin, Kevin Owens went to the Elton John concert and it got canceled. And now he has beef with Elton John. <laughs> So you should have gone with that one. Yeah, that, that was, was better. That was way better. <laughs> and shorter. Especially after I talked about his Shania Twain thing. Yeah. The same guy? Same guy. Okay. Um, listeners, tell me Elton John's drag queen name. Um, <laughs> uh, you can send that to at Bad Play Style on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> do that. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get around to watching the Foo Show, but that's the thing I want to do. Oh yeah. So I'll get I'll get around to doing that. For those who don't know, Foo Show is a, like a VR talk show where you get placed in an environment for a game, and then a dude interviews a dev for that game at the same time that you're in the environment and can like mess with the stuff in that environment. Yeah, it's super neat. In VR seems cool. There's it's a very there's, cool. There's concept. one for Quadrilateral Cowboy. Oh, there is. Yeah. Um, there's one for the four um, Firewatch. I think there's like one other episode. They've been coming out really slowly. Mm. I bet it's hard um, to do. Like uh, the guy who makes it do- is busy doing other things too. Um, he does a weird VR project for Adult Swim, um, where there's a VR rendition of Carl Butan and Anna Deluski <laughs> yeah. talking about football. Hell yeah! <laughs> um, Wait, is the Stone Cold Lock of the Week in VR now? I forget. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll show it to you later. <laughs> This is, this is Will Smith of testing yeah. fame, yep. not of um, Big Willie style fame. <laughs> right. Um, but he has the better better Twitter handle. Yeah. <laughs> he is at Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beat him to it. Um. I, I, I wish there was a famous celebrity with my name just so that I could have beaten them to the <laughs> yeah. Twitter handle. Just to like, as like a power play on them. <laughs> I don't actually want there to be a celebrity named Owen Harriman, but like, I think that would be funny. I would sell it to them. Yeah. For an exorbitant amount of money. <laughs> I might. Depends on what, what the offer is. I think it would be way more fun to like lead them along for yeah. just years. For sure. But also give me 30 grand so I can pay my bills off. <laughs> yeah, actually. Like, <laughs> like, they're they're going to buy me a house. Yeah. So, yeah like, let enough. me just crush my problems with your stupid problems. And I'll, I'll, be at, I'll be at Stargrave. <laughs> like, like, I'm fine with being at Stargrave. Yeah. Although I think that's actually taken, which is why it's not my Twitter handle. Where can they find us? I already mentioned the Twitter. We'll yeah. mention it again. This is at the bad of... play style on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, if you want to send us uh, manifestos, screeds, and game codes, you can call, you can email us at badplaystyle at gmail And your Firewatch pictures. Yeah, send us your Firewatch pictures. And Elton John's track name. Yeah. Yeah. No, send that on Twitter though. Are we giving out a chicken hat? No chicken no. hats. No chicken hat. What are we playing next week? We are playing. Arcane Studios 2017 Prey, not to be confused with the other game named Prey or the other Prey game that got canceled. Cool. Eat Prey Transmogrify, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, here's the best and <laughs> the only best part of the show part. that matters. 
Sam Fisher versus. <laughs> um, and since I chose it, I get to frame it. Okay. Um, I, think, I think it's Sam Fisher versus the same scenario. So he has to go <laughs> into the woods and live in the firehouse and confront his emotional problems. Oof. I think he loses. So I, I, I think uh, Sam has zero emotional growth by the end of his summer. Oh, for sure. I think um, he almost never talks to Delilah and mm-hmm. finds her very annoying. And I think he probably killed Ned. Yeah, Ned's definitely dead. <laughs> yeah, Ned was dead first encounter. He found dead Ned. Ned day two and, I, I, and killed I like, him. I, I think Ned. Um, well, didn't... No, we find him day one, so I no. Think... But what I'm saying is like he gets jumped, and then day two he finds him. No, he nah. sees him on the ridge and just pat. <laughs> I, I I think you're both selling Sam short. Like I I, I think. Oh, you think you? I think Ned didn't know it was coming. Boots on the ground. <laughs> Ned gets got. Like... You think he showed up like weeks early and just scouted it out? Yeah, yeah, like 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 <laughs> like Ned... these, bro. <laughs> like so that that scenario where where Hank encounters Ned and Nine sh- Ned shines the flashlight in the alternate timeline where Sam Fisher is there. Ned's there with a flashlight, but there's nobody down below, and Sam Fisher's like up in a tree with like a pistol. <laughs> Just Mozambique's him from a tree. <laughs> yeah. 60 yards away. And then, like, <laughs> with a handgun. Yep. Da, da, da. yep. With a 5 7. And then, like, that's how he rolls. Then picks the lock on the cave, throws Ned yep. down, <laughs> locks it up. You're with your son now. He's called Delilah. There are two dead bodies <laughs> somewhere around here. You'll have to find them when I leave. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think um, on the grounds of the game being about, like, emotional growth and, like, addressing. Oh, yeah, no, he fails part. completely. No, he fails completely. But he does kill Ned. Yeah. So there is <laughs> so victory in Sam's world. <laughs> um, he wins on his own terms. Um, Keenan, you don't have to keep calling yourself a stupid name uh, on December the fourteenth. But the way the season's going, <laughs> we'll be right back at yep. it. Yeah, Come. yeah. We're gonna have to figure something out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. I think we should go for a shorter one this time. I think I have other ideas about the way that this goes. <laughs> okay. Um, but <laughs> we can we'll talk. talk about that later. Um, well, friends, uh, remember, Jet's made out of poop, and we will see you next time. Yeah, you get your action points from poop. is made by my good friend Benjamin Busey. You can find his SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash basicbenji206.